Good morning, and welcome back to this week's Word. I'm Pastor Jody, First Baptist Church, Kaiser, West Virginia. So we here at First Baptist Church are about to embark on another journey, and we're going to go through another discipleship class. It's called The Mind of Christ by T.W. Hunt. <clears throat> this is a Bible study, much like experiencing God, that, that draws you in to a closer relationship with the Lord. And it's all based off Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was first in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> and so I pray that you want to develop the thoughts of God, the thoughts of Christ. And I believe this Bible study will help us get there. And so we're going to begin today uh, in Philippians chapter 2. And the caption of my Bible talks about unity through humility. Of course, when we get to, to verse 5, the way that we have unity, the way that we humble ourselves is taking on the character or the mind of Christ. And so I pray that you're able to do that with me as we go through this uh, journey together uh, through God's word and through this discipleship course. So each week I'll be sharing uh, just a little bit about <clears throat> what we've been experiencing here at the church. and we'll convert those over into messages uh, in case you can't get here for this Bible study. So this week we're going to start in verses 1 through 4 of chapter 2. And again, it's unity through humility. Verse 1 says, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, bearing, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interest of others. May the Lord add to the blessing of the reading of his word here today. Again, if, you, if we are ever going to see revival in our community, in our lifetime, we, the church, must be unified. And the question that needs to be answered today is, how can this be done? How can we, the church, be unified? Well, the, the simple answer is, is to be like-minded. Paul is encouraging us to be like-minded. He says in Scripture that it will fulfill his joy if we become like-minded with him. And the cool thing is, when we become like-minded with Paul, we're actually taking on the mind of Christ because Paul had the mind of Christ. Again, from verse 5, let, not, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. It would be awesome if every born-again follower of Christ began to think like Christ. To do the things that Christ came to do. And that was to testify, <clears throat> to tell all people about the wonderful gift of salvation. We as believers, we talked about this last week, about sharing our testimonies. When we share our testimonies, we're doing the work of Christ. And to me, that is being like-minded. And again, Paul says that we need to be unified. The way that will happen is to be of the same mind, to take on the mind of Christ. And so as we embark on this journey, I pray that as we go through several scriptures throughout this journey, that it begins to shape you and mold you, shape me and mold me, that I might become more and more like Christ, that you might become more and more like Christ. So verse 5 is going to be the focal point for next week's message. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that next week. But uh, but for this answer of the question is, how are we ever going to see revival in our lifetime? And how, how can we do this? I believe Paul gives us the recipe. Paul gives us the answer in verse 1. He gives us four conditions that must be met in order for anyone to obtain the mind of Christ. Go back to verse 1. And let's look at those, those four things that he says. First of all, he says, is there any consolation in Christ? Maybe give us better understanding. Is there any comfort in Christ? Is there any comfort in Christ? When you think about the work of Christ, the things that he's done for you, you know, we just, again, came out of Easter, celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A few days earlier, that Friday, we celebrated the work 
that was done on the cross. Even though it was gruesome, it was God's love toward us. It was the love of Christ toward us because he was willing to suffer and die that we might live. Does that give you comfort today? Do you take comfort in the things that Christ has done for you? Take it personal. You should take it personal because he did it just for you. He did it just for me. And so I take great comfort in the things that Christ has done for me. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse five says, for as the sufferings of Christ abounds in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. This is why Paul was able to say in Philippians chapter one, verse 21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Why would Paul, the Apostle Paul say something like that? Because he had the mind of Christ. For him to live, he was going to do the work of Christ. And that's what the Holy Spirit is doing right now in us. That's what the Holy Spirit is doing in every born again follower of Christ. He's working out through us to finish the things that God set forth for us to do. Finish the things that Christ placed in our hearts by the work that he did in this world. And so we take great comfort that Christ has showed us the way, that that Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is living within us, finishing the work that Christ began. Now Christ finished everything that he was called to do, but the work continues. And that's why I say, finish the work. And how will we finish the work? When every person has an opportunity to hear the gospel. That's the finish line is testifying and taking the gospel to all people everywhere. We talked about that last week, fulfilling the great commission. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. And so I pray that we, because of the comfort we have in Christ, we're able to go out and share the gospel with others. The second if or condition is if any comfort of love. How do you feel about the love of Christ? Do you take comfort in his love towards you? John chapter 15, verse 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. Do you hear that? Greater love has no one than this. Christ died once for sin, and he died for all people everywhere. You know, I heard somebody say one time, you know, Christ, I'm no good. Christ, there's no way that Christ could love me. Greater love has no one than this, than lay down his life for his friends. He calls you friend if you will heed his voice, if you will obey his commands. He calls you friend. He died for the sins of the world. He didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That is God's great love. Take comfort in it today. Jesus Christ in John chapter 14, when he was telling his disciples that he must suffer and die, and be raised again and then go back to the kingdom of heaven. If he was giving them that big picture, they were having a hard time understanding and they didn't want him to go away. And he says these calming word, words in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And the way you know. And where I go, you, and the way you know. I might have messed it up a little bit, but you understand what I'm saying. Christ was letting them know that he was going back to the kingdom of heaven, but that they could take great comfort because... He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's preparing a place for us. And that's God's great love for us through his son, Jesus Christ. Do you love the fact that you can take comfort in his love? Do you love that? Do you love the things of God? You see, I don't believe that we, we can truly be a born again follower of Christ if we don't love the things of God. Do you love his comfort? Do you love his love for you? The third thing is if there's any fellowship of the Spirit, do you love the work of the Holy Spirit in your life? Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. 
That means that we can do these things as much as we like, and there's no problem with it. It just brings God glory. Do you love his love? Do you love his joy? Do you love his peace? Do you love his patience? Do you love his kindness? Do you love his gentleness? Do you love his faithfulness and his self-control? Do you love all these things? Do you love the character of God? I pray that you do today. I pray that you love all the things that we're talking about. Because when you love these things, you're proving your love for God and you are developing the mind of Christ. The fourth thing he says in verse 1, he says, if any affection and mercy. Do you have affection for other believers? Do you like to extend mercy to those that you come in contact with? Because that's what Christ did. He loved meeting people where they were. Very, very, you know, how many times do we see Christ in Scripture coming up to somebody? The woman caught in adultery. People are judging her, ready to stone her. Christ stoops down and he comforts her. He had affection for her. He had mercy on her. The church, when we show that affection, when we show that mercy to a lost and dying world, we are presenting to them Christ, the love of God. Paul says in the book of Colossians that this is the character of a new person in Christ. Colossians chapter 3, I'll just read here quickly. Verse 12 and 13 says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. Again, this is the new person in Christ, the new man, the new woman. We become a completely different person because we are moving according to the Spirit of God. We are moving with love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. And Paul speaks that again in Colossians. So if you love all these things, you are fulfilling Paul's joy. He says in verse 2, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. Being like-minded with him which is the mind of Christ. He conformed not to the world, but to the Lord. He modeled his life after Christ. That's why he was able to say at the end of his life, I've run my race. I've finished my course. I have fought the good fight. Can you say that today? I have fought the good fight. I have, I've finished my course. Can you say that today? The only way that you can say that is if you have developed the mind of Christ and you have done all that God has called you to do. He says, this will fulfill my joy if you are like-minded. He says in verse 3, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. This is the golden rule, right? Treat others better than yourself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interest of others. We live in a world where, where people are judged all the time. And, you know, we're not the judge. The judge is coming. We don't have to worry about judging anyone. I know we might talk about certain sins and we're talking about different lifestyles. And it might sound like we're judging. No, we're just warning. Warning people to get away from the, the world system, the way the sin, away from the sins of this world and be conformed to the word of God. Because when you do that, you begin to take on the mind of Christ. I want to ask that again, that same question I've already asked. Do you love the things of God? Number one, do you love God? Do you love the things of God? Do you love being a part of Bible study? Do you love being around other believers? Do you love talking about the word of God with others. What an exciting time that is. Through both of the, the small groups that we just came through experiencing God, I couldn't wait till Wednesday and Thursday nights just to have that fellowship around, around the word of God. It just brought joy to my heart. And I know it brought joy to those others that were in attendance to their hearts as well. There's nothing like the fellowship of the Lord and fellowship of other believers. And I believe as we have more fellowship, we have more unity and we are developing the mind of Christ. That's when I think the spirit of God will just sweep down through this community and we'll see revival.
I pray that you continue to, to pray that out and walk this out. And I pray that you are on a journey to knowing God and knowing his power and knowing his love for you. Hey, thanks for joining me. I pray that you have a great week in the Lord, and I pray to see you next week.